to the if you go to the site, if you go to Unit 3 Practice, for example, I've got this set up so <clears throat> the assignments are just in order like they used to be, but under each group of assignments, there's, there's a link to some resources. So, for example, this is the Honors Algebra 2 site, but yours will look the same. If you go down to, for example, the 6.4 resources, it'll take you, it'll open up a new page, and then you got links to everything. So the top link is, it opens up, you click on it, it opens a new page with a PDF of the textbook which you could, you know, you can download if you want to, you, or you can just look at it. Uh, it's got, I'll have a section with notes. So then if you go to that, it's just, it's going to go to, this is the, these are the, the PDFs of all the class notes we had for that stuff. Okay. It's got the math on the spot videos. If you click on those, these are just those little videos, right, with that high energy guy. But they're good videos. And then I'm even making a playlist that's only got the stuff we do in class for this unit. So if you go, if you click on that, it'll be just the unit three instructional videos. Okay? Okay, good stuff, right? Yeah. Okay, that took a little while, so I hope you use that, please. That was not, that took a little, a little doing. <clears throat> so here's what I want to talk about today. So this will be quick. Uh, what I want to what I want to add today is is nothing really that new. So remember we talked about multiplying polynomials yesterday. So let's put all the phones away, please. Either put them away or come stick them up here. Take your pick. Uh, like in your pocket away, please. Uh, so we talked about multiplying polynomials, right? And that's a process of distribution. That can be kind of a time-consuming thing. It's not really that difficult, but there's there's a lot of distributing and adding like terms. Sometimes we can take shortcuts, and whenever we can take shortcuts in math, we always like to do that. We can avoid doing a lot of the algebra. So the first, I'm going to show you some product patterns, and when you see these kinds of patterns, you can just write down an answer instead of having to go through the whole process of distributing and simplifying. So first thing I want to remind you about, we talked about conjugates earlier in the year. Conjugates are just, it's just a pattern when I have a binomial, when, I'm, when I've got two terms, like for example, a plus b, what's the conjugate of that? Do you remember? The conjugate of, what is it? No. All it is, really simple, all the conjugate is, is just the same binomial with a diff, the other operation. So if we started off with a plus b, the conjugate of a plus b is a minus b. What's the conjugate of a minus b? A plus b. Right? That's it. Okay? That's all there is to it. So then the conjugate product patterns are just this. If I multiply a plus b times its conjugate, so a plus b times a minus b, it will always turn out to be a squared minus b squared. So whatever the first thing is in, in either of the conjugates, that gets squared, and whatever the second thing is, that gets squared. And of course, it doesn't matter the order in which you multiply conjugates, right? Can you just put those bottles away, please? So either a plus b times a minus b or a minus b times a plus b. Uh, either way, you know, it doesn't matter, right? Multiplying is, multiplication is associative and commutative. We can multiply things in any order we want to. The result's going to be the same. Okay, so what do we get then? Let's go back and do an example of that. So what would we get, for example, if we did something like, what if we did something like, how about, uh, 2x plus 3 times 2x minus 3. Okay, does everybody see that that's that conjugate pattern? Right, what's, what's, what's a in this case? 2x. So the first thing which we could call a is 2x. Right? Okay, what about the second thing? What's b? 3. And so really what we've got here is just a plus b times, we, oh, what's with the bottle? Oh, yes. Okay, thanks. Let's put that away. Okay, so a plus b times a minus b is, is what? What would what, we say that was? a squared minus b squared, right? The difference of the squares. So what's that going to give us here, right? Our a is, what did we say it was? It's 2x, right? It's the quantity. 2x, so we're going to get a squared minus rb is 3 squared, right? Just simplify that. 
so what is but that's easy simplification what is the quantity two x squared what do i have to do there yeah i distribute the two right so i'm going to get two squared is four x squared is x squared right so i get four x squared minus nine done right it's easy okay we don't have to go through the process of distributing now that one doesn't save you a ton of time but it saves you some time right so that that's you know, it's a somewhat useful pattern, but they get better. Some of these save you a lot of time. So what about stuff like this? What if we wanted to take a binomial, you know, same kind of thing, A plus B, where A just means the first term, B means the second term, and square it out, or cube it out, or take it to the fifth power, right? That would be time consuming. I mean, just think about the process of taking A plus B to the fifth. And this is the simple one, because these this is just an A and a B, but what if A was like, 9x and b was 4y or something. I mean, then it would be harder, right? Mm -hmm. That would be a much more difficult process. But even if it's just an a and a b, that's hard. I've got to take the a plus b times a plus b, get an answer, right? Simplify it. Then I take whatever that answer is and multiply it by another a plus b. I simplify that whole thing and multiply that by another a plus b. I simplify that whole thing and multiply by another a plus b and finally simplify again, right? That's a lot of work. That might take half an hour, right? That's a lot of stuff to do. Maybe not half an hour, but it, I mean, it'd be a while. Uh, is there a shortcut? There is. Fortunately, there's a really good shortcut. There's a theorem that we're not going to cover. It's called the binomial theorem. If we have some time at the end, I'll come back and talk about it because it relates to some probability stuff But at the end of the year. But for now, we're not going to touch that. There is an easy way to do this, though. It's a little trick. It's called Pascal's Triangle. It's a slick little uh, kind of a, a pattern that you make with numbers, but it, it helps us expand out any of those binomials to any power. So the rules for Pascal's Triangle are pretty simple. You just you always you start with a 1, and then you always have 1s along the outside of the triangle. But the interior numbers are always going to be the sums of the numbers above to the right and the left, okay? So, for example, I think I goes backwards. It should be the left and the right. I mean, that, those are flipped around, but you get the idea. One plus one is two, right? Each one of these rows on the Pascal's triangle has some meaning. We call this top one row zero, then row one, then row two, etc. And you'll see why here in a second. Let's fill in the rest of these rows really quickly. It's easy to do. So what are the numbers in row four going to be? Yeah, 1 and then 3, because 1 plus 2 is 3, and then 3 and a 1, right? What about the next row? 1, 6, 4, 9. Good. Okay, and we could keep going with that, right? And let's just go down. We'll just go to row 5. We don't have to finish the whole thing up. What's this row going to look like? 1. Okay, what do these mean? Okay, what these are, Pascal's triangle is really just giving us the coefficients of all the terms when we multiply out a plus b to the n. So if we take something like, and these are the values of n. So if I take a plus b to the 0, well, no, what's anything to the 0? It's 1, right? a plus b to the 1 would just be a plus b, right? So the coefficient of a would be 1 and the coefficient of b would be 1, right? But now it starts to get useful. What if we did something like a plus b squared? What this is telling us here is that a plus b squared equals the coefficients are 1, 2, and 1 when I multiply that out. Okay, what happens with the powers? The powers are really simple. What happens with the powers is you're always going to start off, the, the sum of the exponents for each term has to always add up to whatever n is. So in this case, it would be 2. But you're going to start off with all of the weight of the exponents shifted over to the a's. And then with each term, the a's are going to get weaker by 1 and the b's are going to get stronger by 1. Right. So the first one, we're going to get a to what? What we say? We start off with all the exponent weight, so that's going to be a 2, right? 
B is going to be 0. Okay? Because 2 plus 0 is 2. Next term, we're going to get A to what? What do you think? So the A's are going to get weaker by 1 each time. The B's are going to get stronger. So what's the exponent for A going to be? 1. How about B? 1. And then finally, A to the 0, B to the 2, right? So that's actually giving us, now we could simplify that because we don't have to write, I mean, it gets, it gets easier because we don't really write coefficients of 1, right? So we wouldn't write that 1 there. We would just get an a squared and b to the 0 is what? 1. So we wouldn't even write that. So that first one would just be an a squared plus 2. a to the 1 is just a. b to the 1 is just b. And then the last term, we wouldn't write the 1. We wouldn't write the a to the 0. It's just a b squared. Okay? See how that works? So we could even go all the way down like to row 5. And we could expand out something really complicated like a plus b to the fifth. It would be easy to do. Right? We can just write down the pattern based on Pascal's triangle. So what's the first thing? I want you to take a second in your notebooks and just think about that. Okay? All right? Get your notebooks out and see if you can think. So, so get out your notebook and, and, and write through that, please. So what are we going to get? Those are the coefficients. And see if you can just at least get started on this. See if you can think of the process, right? It's the same thing we just did for n equals 2, only n equals 5. Same pattern. Those are the coefficients, 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. And the powers of a are going to go from start at 5 and go down to 0, and b is going to start at 0 and go up to 5, right? And just think, I mean, this is probably a 20-minute problem otherwise, right? So this is saving us, you know, I mean, a lot of time, 20 minutes, half an hour. I'm not sure, but it would take a long time to expand that whole thing out and add up all the like terms, okay, especially if A and B are complicated. So the coefficients, these are the coefficients right here, right? That's what Pascal's triangle is always giving you, are just the coefficients, right? So we could start off. We'll just do this together. So, so the coefficients are just going to be 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, and 1, right? So what we want to do is just fill in the blanks. But the blank, that's easy, right? Because the powers always work the same. What's going to be our initial power of A? Fifth, right? Because this, this is a 5. So we're going to start off, in this case, with A to the fifth. All of that weight of that, all of the exponent power shifted to the A's. Right? Let me scoot this up a little bit so you can see it better. Right? So then we're going to get A to the fifth, B to the zero. Yeah, because 5 plus 0 is 5. Then we shift over 5 times a to the 4, b to the 1, right? Plus 10, a cubed, b squared, and etc. right? 10, now the a goes down to the 2, b goes up to the 3, a goes down to the 1, b goes up to the 4, and then finally we get a to the 0, b to the 5th. But we can make that a lot simpler. What would that first term really just be? a to the 5th plus 5, a to the 4th, b, right? Plus 10, a cubed, b squared, plus 10, a squared, b cubed, plus 5 AB to the fourth plus B to the fifth. And there's our expansion formula for A plus B to the fifth, right? 
Now, this is kind of optional, but a lot of you guys, I mean, I, I want you to just think about this for a second. There's something really pretty cool going on here that you got to think a little bit about. Maybe you'll get a little intuition from this. If we do something like A plus B to the fifth, shouldn't that be the very same thing as B plus A to the fifth? Right? Because A plus B equals B plus A, right? Everybody agree? So if I were to swap the A and the B, I should get the same pattern, shouldn't I? Doesn't that sort of mean that this expansion has to be symmetrical about, you know, that the terms have to be sort of replaceable? If I shifted the A's and the B's, it wouldn't change anything? Well, look at the coefficients. If you look at Pascal's triangle, in fact, for the whole triangle, oh, he's got to go there it is. Okay. If I look at the whole triangle, well, what do you see? If I draw a line down the center of this thing, isn't it symmetrical? 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, right? 1, 3, 3, 1. You see what I'm saying? You see the symmetry in the numbers? They always kind of build up and then step down in exactly the same order, right? And if we look at what we get when we add, when we add these... So now look at like look at the look at the powers, right? If I look at these terms, look closely. Sorry, I got interrupted there, but get get your train of thought back. So if I look at, at the terms that kind of fold onto each other, look at that term and that term. The coefficients are the same, and look what happened to the exponents. I get a a to the three, b to the two, a to the two, b to the three. Once again, if I flip those around, it's the same. What about these guys? The fives are the same, and I get a to the four, b to the one. Well, a to the one, b to the four. You kind of see the pattern there, right? It works the way it has to, doesn't it? Okay, so let's just focus on. You could build this thing. It takes what you know, thirty seconds to build Pascal's triangle, and then you can, if you can, for yourself, you could derive the expansion for any reasonable power of a plus b. I mean, you could do this thing all the way down to n equals ten, and it wouldn't take that long to do. There is a formula called the binomial theorem which just kind of summarizes Pascal's triangle in one big formula, but it's a pretty pretty ugly formula. I actually, I mean, I would just use Pascal's triangle until I got to really big powers of n. I would just do that. Okay, well, what I want to do is just really just focus on rows 2 and 3, because those are the ones we use the most. Rows 0 and 1 are so simple that you don't even need it. And beyond that, you know, we don't really do much. But we, we do square things out and cube things out a lot. So let's just look, for example, at row 2, right? The coefficients are 1, 2, and 1, right? And we know that the powers of A are going to, we're going to start with an A squared, and then we get an A, and then it goes away, and the B step up, right? So this formula just comes right out of Pascal's triangle. Well, that's one that you should memorize. That's one we use enough that you should really kind of get used to that. And all you really have to remember is the coefficient pattern of 1, 2, 1, right? It's useful, though, because it allows us to take things like, like this, for example. Let's look at this, this example. Now, that would take a little bit of doing if I wanted to multiply that out. I'd have to write it as 2x plus 10 times 2x plus 10 and distribute the 2x all the way through and distribute the 10 all the way through and add up like terms. That's not a ton of work, but it's some work. How could I do this using the pattern? What's my A? 2x. What's my b? 10. Okay. And so if we do a plus b squared, that's our pattern, right? So what's this going to look like then? So we're going to get, what's a squared going to be? Okay, the quantity 2x squared plus 2 times a is 2x times b is 10 plus b squared, right? All I've got to do is just simplify that. That's no, that's easy to simplify, right? What's that term going to be if I distribute the 2? 
good. 4x squared. Now, what about this? 2 times 10. I always multiply the numbers first. 2 times 10 is times 2x, or 40x, right? And then 10 squared is 100, right? No big deal, okay? It's always just going to be the first thing squared plus 2 times the first times the second plus the second thing squared, right? How about this one down here? Now, a lot of times people will teach this as having, as having two formulas. They'll add another formula where we could do something like a plus or minus b, and that's going to make that first symbol either a plus or a minus, and the second one's always plus. You don't have to do that. That's just more memorization. Don't bother. Just use this formula. But what's the value of b going to be in this one? Yeah, it's just going to be negative 1. Good. So it's the, we, don't, we don't have to have another formula. We just have a negative value for b. That's no big deal, right? So we end up with, here's our a, there's our b, right? And we'll follow the same pattern. So a squared would just be the quantity 10x squared plus 2 times a is 10x. B is negative 1. So what's that going to do to the sign of that term? When I multiply all that stuff out? Negative. It's going to be negative, right? And then finally we get negative 1 squared. But anything squared is positive, right? So if we simplify that, what would we get? What's 10x quantity squared? Good. We've got to square the 10, square the x, so 100x squared. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 times 10, negative 20x, and then negative 1 squared is positive 1, right? Okay, so we could do the same thing then for row 3. You guys already told me that row 3 is 1, 3, 3, 1. So do you see that that just gives us that formula, gives us that expansion? If I cube out a plus b, I just get a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed, right? 1, 3, 3, 1. Say it again. So, so then we could do, we'll just skip right up to, a, to one where we've got a negative, right? We, we'll just do one example, and you guys can work on this. What's our a there? 10x. What's our b? negative 9, right? And so we've got a plus b cubed. So what are we going to get? So a cubed is going to be 10x cubed, right? Plus 3 times a squared. So that's going to be the quantity 10x squared. b is negative 9, right? So that's going to make that second term negative, isn't it? Everybody agree? Mm -hmm. OK. Third term, so I'm going to get 3 times a to the 1, so 10x to the 1, times negative 9 squared. What's the sign of the third term going to be? Positive, right? Because I'm taking the negative 9 and squaring it. So that's positive 81, isn't it? Right. And then finally, we're going to get b, which is negative 9 cubed. Well, a negative number to an odd power is negative, right? So you're going to get this oscillating pattern where you get positive, negative, positive, negative, right? If you add those two up, they'll make it zero. Say it again? If you add 81 and a negative 81, it'll be zero. Right? Uh, but that's, okay, well, let's just take these, let's just see what we get. So the first term is what? What if I cube out 10x? Good, I got 10 cubed times x cubed, and 10 cubed is 1,000, right? How do you get that? Well, 1 followed by three zeros, right? Whatever the power of 10 is, that's how many zeros you get. So 1,000 x cubed. And then what do we get here? So we get 3 times negative 9 is negative 27. And what's this going to be? If I distribute the 2, that term is going to be, isn't it going to be 100 x squared? So negative 27 times 100 is what? That's big. 27, 100, right? 27 followed by two zeros. So that whole thing, it's going to be negative, right? Because I've got that negative. 
is negative 2700 x squared, right? How about here? Uh, this time, what's, what's negative 9 squared? Positive 81. So 3 times 81, well, that's big, but what is that? What's 3 times 80? 240 plus 3 times 1 is, yeah, 3. So 243 times 10, what do I do? Add 0. So plus 2430x, right? And then what about negative 9 cubed? We know it's going to be negative, and then 9 cubed, remember what that one is? No, it's 729. I haven't made you memorize those yet, but you see why I wanted you to. You're going to be doing a lot of this, right? So we'll, we will do a little memorization about it. I'll, 9 cubed is 729. 9 cubed is 729, yeah. <coughs> okay. So, yeah, that's, that's the assignment. That's all you're going to do. Go. Good work.